Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at our Chapter 4 quiz review found on page 194 in our textbook, and we're going to be looking at all the questions, so pay numbers 1 through 16. For number 1 and 1 through 3, it says write the equation of, of the line in slope-intercept form. So just remember, the slope-intercept form looks like this. So all you're having to do is first find the y-intercept. So in this one, for number 1, the y-intercept is negative 2. And then the next thing you're going to have to find is the slope. Remember, you can find the slope one of two ways. You can do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is the changes in y over the change in x, or you can just simply find the rise over run since you have pictures here. I would find the rise over run since you have a picture. So we went up one, two, three, four, five, and over six. So up five, sorry, up five over one. So your slope is equal to five. So we would write our equation as y is equal to negative, um, sorry, negative 5x, switching up y and slope there, um, minus 2. Okay, so there's your answer for number 1. You can do the same thing for number 2. Your y-intercept is 5, because that's where it um, crosses the y-axis. And then the slope would be down 1, and then over 1, 2, 3. So your slope is a negative one-third. So my answer for number two, y is equal to negative one-third x plus five. And then for number three, your y-intercept is zero. And your slope would be down one, two, three, four, and over one, two. So if, if you write your slope originally as this, negative four over two, that's just going to reduce to negative 2. So you can just simply write number 3 as y is equal to negative 2x. You don't need to write the plus 0 because that will just cancel out and still give you negative 2x as your answer. So the next we have is point slope form. And this one's a little bit more challenging than slope intercept because there's a little bit more things to look at here. What we need to do first is find the slope. And since we don't have a picture, we do need to use the y2 minus over x2 minus x1. So for negative, so for number 4, I'm going to do negative 1 minus 5 and 1 minus negative 2. That's going to give me negative 6 over 3, which is equal to negative 2. So m is equal to negative 2. And remember, there are actually two different ways you can write this. You're essentially just plugging in your y and your x. Um, one way you can write it is with the first example, um, with the negative 2 and the 5. You can say y minus 5 is equal to negative 2, parentheses, x minus negative 2, which would be x plus 2. The other way you can write it would be x and y. You could say y minus negative 1, which is changed to y plus 1, is equal to negative 2 parentheses x minus 1. So both of these would work for number 4. For number 5 again, we're going to find the slope first. So I'm going to do negative 1 minus negative 2 and 2 minus negative 3. So that's going to give me 1 over 5. So my slope is 1 fifth. So that means I can write my answer. I'm going to start with that first set here. Remember, you don't have to write both of these answers either. So these are just two possible answers. Um, we can say y minus negative 2, which we brought y plus 2, is equal to 1 fifth parentheses x minus negative 3, which would be x plus 3. So that's one way. The other way you can write it would be with your other two points, x and y. We can have y minus negative 1, which would be y plus 1, is equal to 1 fifth parentheses x minus 2. So here are your two possible answers for number 5. And then for number 6, again, just finding slope again, we're going to do 4 minus 0 over 4 minus 1. So that's going to give us 4 thirds as our slope. So we can have y minus 0 for the first one, which will just be y, is equal to 4 thirds parentheses x minus 1. Remember, you can just say is y equals 4 thirds parentheses x minus 1. And then you could use the other equation to write y, or the other points, y minus 4, 
is equal to 4 thirds parentheses x minus 4. So here are your two possible solutions for number 6. 7 through 9, you're still doing um, the same thing, and it says write a linear function, so you actually will have it written in, in this form. f of x is equal to mx plus b, but this is where you can plug it into the slope-intercept form to find the um, y-intercept, so that you can then go ahead and find your slope-intercept form. The first thing you're going to want to do with number 7 is just rewrite your points without the f of 0 or f of 5. Next, we can find the slope by doing negative 3 minus 2 over 5 minus 0. That's going to give us negative 5 over 5, which is equal to negative 1 slope for number 1. And then remember, we say, okay, if the slope is this, then we plug in maybe x and y values. So I'm going to plug in x is 0, y is 2. So in my y is equal to mx plus v, I'm trying to get b. So y is equal to 2, m is equal to negative 1, x is 0, b is unknown. That's going to give me 0 plus b, so b is equal to 2. So my answer for number 7 will be y is equal to negative 1x or just negative x plus 2. Okay. The next one, oh, sorry, just kidding. We have to make sure that it's written as a linear function, so it does have to say f of x. So I just need to change this y to say f of x is equal to negative 1x plus 2. So don't forget that for your quiz like I just did. Again, for number 8, we're going to start off by writing our, our point. Once you have your points, then you can find your slope. So we're going to say negative 6 minus negative 6 over 4 minus negative 1. That's going to give me 0 over 5, which is equal to 0. So now I get to plug in 0 for m. I'm going to use my first point, negative 1 and negative 6. So y is equal to mx plus b. That would be negative 6 is equal to 0, parentheses negative 1, plus b. That's essentially going to be b is equal to negative 6. So m is equal to 0, b is equal to negative 6. So I'll have y is equal to negative 6 for this one. Just remember that we're going to replace the y with f of x. Okay, we don't have to write 0x because it's just going to reduce back to 0. And last but not least, we have number 9. So here are my points again. I'm going to go ahead and find my slope. So I'm going to do 3 minus negative 2 for my differences in y's, and then negative 2 minus negative 3 for my differences in x. So I'm going to have 5 over 1, which is equal to 5. So here's my m. And then I'm going to use my first two points, x and y. So negative 2 is equal to 5, parentheses, negative 3, plus b. This is negative 15 plus b is equal to negative 2. Add 15 to both sides, I get b is equal to 13. Okay, so my answer will be f of x is equal to 5x plus 13 for number 9. Okay. For these next few questions, these next few questions we're looking at parallel and perpendicular lines. Remember, parallel has the same slope, perpendicular has a negative reciprocal slope. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I found slope for each A, B, and C. So here are my slopes. A was negative 1 fourth, B is positive 4, and C is positive 1 fourth. Because A and B have, have negative reciprocals, we can say that A and B are perpendicular. No, because none of the slopes match, there are no parallel slopes. Okay, now let's go on to number 11. Number 11 was a little bit different because you had to put them in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to show you what I did there. And once we're done, you can see that A slope is negative one-third, B slope is three-halves, and C slope is three-halves. So since B and C match, we're going to say that they're parallel. There are no slopes that are perpendicular here. For numbers 12 through 14, you have two different answers because part A was supposed to write a parallel equation and part B was supposed to write a perpendicular equation. So the fir first thing you needed to find was your slope. And then the second thing I did, which I'm going to show you in just a second, is use your slope-intercept form y is equal to mx plus b to find 
B, and then step three will be to write equation. So let me show you how I did that. For number 12, to find slope, I just went from one point to the other. So here's where one point intersects, and here's where the other one intersects. So I have one, two, three over one. So my slope for number 12 is equal to three. And then I'm going to plug in this point right here. So y is two, and x is six. So y is six, uh, two is equal to mx, so that's three times six plus b. I get 18 plus b is equal to 2, and then subtract 18 from both sides. b is equal to negative 16, so my point, um, my line for parallel would be y is equal to 3x minus 16. For perpendicular, I'm going to do this one in blue. I can still use these same points, but I'm going to make my slope be negative one-third instead. So 2 is equal to negative one-third times 6 plus b. Negative one-third of 6 would give me a negative 2. And then I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So that b is equal to 4. So I'm going to have y is equal to negative one-third x plus 4. So that was part B, and there's part A. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and show my work for each of the three next ones. Again, I need to find slope first for number 13. I just found two, two um, points that were right next to one another, so two consecutive points. I go down one and over two, so M is equal to negative one-half, and then I'm going to plug in negative three and negative two to my slope-intercept form. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for this so I can find b, negative one-half times negative two. Gives me a positive one, and I subtract one from both sides. b is equal to negative four. So first, my parallel would be y is equal to negative one-half x minus four. For perpendicular, I just use positive two x. So negative three is equal to two parentheses, negative 2 plus b, and I get um, 3, negative 3 is equal to negative 4 plus b, add 4 to both sides, b is equal to 1, so y is equal to 2x plus 1 for perpendicular and number 13. Since I am running out of room for 14, we're going to do that one on the next page. So once again, I'm going to start off by finding our slope. So I'm going to start with this point. And then go down until I find another intersecting point, which is right here. So it'll be down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. So the slope is negative 4. So y is 0, x is negative 4. So I'm going to have 0 is equal to negative 4 times negative 4 plus b. So that is 0 equals 16 plus b, so b is equal to negative 16. So I'm for my first parallel, I'll have y is equal to negative 4x minus 16. The next one though, I need to make it, I need to make the slope to be a positive 1 fourth. So I'm gonna use the same problem here, except just switch the negative 4 with a positive 4 plus b. I get negative 1 plus b is equal to 0. So that means 1 is equal to b. So I'm going to have y is equal to positive one-fourth x plus one for my perpendicular. There's perp and then parallel. Okay. The last two should have been a little bit easier. Again, for number 15a, you're just writing a linear model that represents the total cost of setting up and maintaining a website as a function. So for this one, I just chose c would be equal to cost, and then 48 is your initial fee plus 44 times m for every month. For letter B, it says find the total cost of setting a website and maintaining it for six months. That means you just do 44 times six plus your $48 and you get 312. And then option C, a different website charges $62 per month, but there's no initial set up fee, but you have $620. I can use this company for 10 months, but if I use my original company, 
of 48 plus 44m and solve for m is equal to 620, I get m is equal to 13 months. So I would say original company. Because 13 months is greater than 10 months. Okay. The last one, number 16, is talking about is this representing a linear um, equation? And my answer for that is yes, because there is a constant rate of change. My next thing I can do is go ahead and write the linear model that will represent that. So remember, you need to find slope first. And then once you find slope, you can use that to find B. Okay, so let's do that real quick. I'm going to take Y's. So again, that's going to be always your bottom number. So 150 minus 155, bottom number in a table, and then x is 10 minus 8. So I'll get negative 5 over 2, so there is your slope for your m. So then I'm going to plug in, if I use this coordinate, 8, 8 comma 155, that's going to be 155 is equal to negative 5 halves times 8 plus b. That's going to be negative 40 divided by 2, that's negative 20 plus b is equal to 155, so b is equal to 175. So my formula or my equation would be y is equal to the negative 5 halves with the x, and then plus 175, okay? I know that was a ton of information for your chapter four, 4 quiz. Just hang in there, study this, rewind if you need to. Good luck on your quiz tomorrow, and thanks for tuning, for tuning in.